Welcome to Chatting the Pictures. My name is Kara Finnegan, and I'm a writer, teacher, and historian of photography. And I'm Michael Shaw. I'm a writer, a psychologist, and also a publisher of Reading the Pictures. This storm photo from England circulated widely, but it's hard to tell how much the picture elicited concern or a more time-stopping curiosity. In this photo by Christopher Furlong for Getty Images, we see people viewing waves created by high winds and spring tides hitting the seawall at the New Brighton Promenade in Liverpool, England on February 17, 2022. A red-level weather event, Storm Eunice, brought hurricane-force winds of up to 122 miles per hour to England, knocking out power to half a million people and causing major travel disruptions. Eunice was also the second major storm in a week to batter the UK. A feature of the storm was apparently something called sting jets, which are narrow bands of higher intensity winds that can cause a lot of damage in a short amount of time. And you really do get the kind of visual effect of the stinging, right? You can imagine that wall of water coming at you in a way that would be almost biting or slashing if it hit you. And, you know, I'm really struck by the juxtaposition in this image of the chaos of the water, you know, the top two thirds of the image with that concrete stability of the human built structures. And you know, you have to kind of wonder in a battle between these two things, which is going to win. The photo is really curious for the composition, for the verticality and the strange lack of threat. It's almost like a painting, but maybe even more so like climate crisis wallpaper. The depth of field is so flat. You know, it is almost like they're viewing something on a wall or behind a wall, or maybe they're at the zoo, you know, looking into a tank of water that's all churned up. It's very, very strange. The body language that's playing out with the two people in the foreground here is really interesting too. The adult seems to be looking more with curiosity. It's harder to tell what the child's doing. The child is sort of bent over like you would be if you were looking up and seeing something coming down on you. So there's a kind of vulnerability there in the child's body language that really is at odds with that adult that's with them. Yeah, I think this photo is in so many pictures of the week because of how paradoxical it is. It is almost desensitizing for the spectacle more than the danger or the violence. There's just a calmness in the body language in the face of that wall of water. And then, you know, the colored benches, it's the same. You know, they're more whimsical. And then that orange rescue float, same thing again. I mean, like that's going to save you. You know, also there's this jarring contrast when you look at so many other photos of this really extreme weather event that showed the violence of the sea against the seawalls in a just much more realistic way. In our climate imagery, in our environmental imagery in general, we tend to be drawn to that. We tend to like the visual drama. But I think you're right, even in a really compelling photo like this, what are the things that are being masked? As the climate crisis escalates, it draws our focus back to the representation of that crisis. And, you know, when you look at these pictures and there's such a lack of tension between the aesthetics and the threat or the information, you know, how much they sensitize versus desensitize, maybe the climate crisis as it gets more extreme also just becomes too hard to process.